Okay, guys, um, I'm going to make a quick video to help you go through um, this little worksheet today. Um, I'm not in class. My um, I actually got COVID over break, and then my son got COVID, and then my husband got COVID. <laughs> um, so technically, I'm not quarantined anymore. I'm going to try to come back as soon as I can, but my son is still quarantined, um, and it's been kind of difficult. Um, so I'm making this video because I can't be in my in my classroom when y'all are tomorrow um, to record, like to actually use my smart board. So anyways, that's why it's pre-recording. So just me just doing it during class. So let's see, I'm gonna hide that. Let's go up here. So you have to understand how to name ionic and molecular compounds, how to write their formulas correctly. That's what we were working on right before Christmas break. That was our last unit. You can't forget about that. It's not gone. It actually continues for pretty much most things throughout the year, you have to remember how to name things. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we spent at least a day reviewing it. Um, you'll get other chances to review it as we go through the unit because you, again, have to know it. But that's why we're taking a whole day on just bringing this stuff back to your memory because as soon as we start tomorrow with our new unit, you are going to need to know this material again. So here we go. All right. So why are the Roman numerals in the compound manganese two got I mean manganese two oxide, but not in the compound magnesium oxide? Okay. So I'm not going to write out the full answer. I feel like that's on you to write out the full answer, but I want to remind you we have our mock periodic table here. Okay. Draw these all the time. So there we go. Mock periodic table. And if the element is in groups one or two right here, my board is not calibrated. <laughs> you take a second and do that in a second. Um, it's always a plus one or a, oh my gosh, you have to pause and calibrate. That's so off. Maybe better. Okay, so this first column is always a plus one. This one's always a plus two. Wow, it's still like looking awful. So plus one or plus two if it's in the if it's a metal in that column. So if it's a metal in that column, like magnesium is, magnesium's over here. Um, well, actually, it's a little higher up. But it's always a plus two. So I don't need to write in magnesium's name that it's a plus two because if you were any kind of scientist doing this kind of work, you would know it's a plus two. It's in that column pair table, and that's something that that a chemist would have learned in high school and now they're you know already through their bachelor's through their master's you know they're a chemist okay so they're they're way past understanding that things in the second column have a plus two charge so it doesn't have to be written in the name whereas manganese manganese is not in that column manganese is over here it's um in the middle so in the middle they have varying charges they can have multiple charges manganese sometimes has a plus two and sometimes has a different charge so being that you don't know which manganese you're working with unless you are told, that's why it's required to be in the name is because we don't always know what manganese charges unless you're told. So like when I go to pick up manganese oxide, it actually matters if it's manganese 2 or manganese 7. It's going to have different kinds of reactions. So if I'm actually working in a lab, I'm going to want to grab the right one. So it needs to be labeled in their name. All right, next one says, explain the difference between an ionic compound and a molecular compound. Again, this is like the biggest takeaway. If you can't tell me the difference between an ionic and molecular, you need to. You need to today. You need to fix it. You need to get it back in your brain because it's not going away. The rest of the year, you have to know the difference between these, between these two to really understand anything else. So an ionic compound is a bond that gives and takes electrons between a metal and a non-metal. Now, it's not completely always a metal and non-metal, but almost always a metal and a non-metal. But it is always something that makes a positive charge and something that makes a negative charge, because that's how they are bonded together, is their attraction, positive negative attraction. A molecular compound is something that bonds through sharing electrons. So there is no giving and taking electrons. There is no charge. It's just sharing electrons back and forth. And it's usually between a non-metal and a non-metal. Okay, so you'll write that in a sentence down below. But that's that's how they're different. All right, let's scroll down. Okay, so we want to indicate whether each compound below is ionic 
or molecular. Okay, so that's literally all. You're not you giving me the name or anything like that. Just is it ionic, is it molecular? You can write an I and an N. That's fine. So how do I know? Again, well, pretty much always it's a metal with a non-metal, and a molecular is a non-metal with a non-metal. So all I really need to check is that first element. Is it a metal? Then it's ionic. If it's not a metal, it's a non-metal, well, metals are always written first. So if the first thing is not a metal, then there's not going to be a metal. So that's going to be a non-metal, non-metal compound, which is molecular. So I'll look up potassium on the periodic table, potassium, which is K. So K on the table is potassium. It's the first column on the periodic table, which makes it a metal. So if this is a metal and this is a non-metal, then that would make this an ionic compound. I'm going to skip down to one that I know that's molecular, being random. Okay, this one. So I'm going to look at P. P on the periodic table um, is phosphorus. Phosphorus is over near nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, all things that sound like nonmetals. They are nonmetals. It's on the nonmetal side of the periodic table. So that is a nonmetal. And then O is oxygen is a nonmetal. So it's a nonmetal, nonmetal compound, making it molecular. There you go. That's all I'm asking you to do there is tell me the molecular or not. Molecular ionic, you gotta find them. If the first element is a metal, then it's ionic. Scroll down. Okay, so circle and write the name of the polyatomic ion in each compound below. Remember, we have these polyatomic ions. We have polyatomic ion quizzes. How do I know that something's gonna have a polyatomic ion in it? Is it's gonna have more than two elements. One, two, three. It has three elements in it, so I know there's a polyatomic ion in there. The polyatomic ion sheet, which I will repost, okay? I will repost in, um, like, this day, okay? So it should be posted. Like, right below your assignment, I will post the polyatomic ion sheet or the notes that have it in it um, if you have misplaced your notes over break. But the polyatomic ion sheet was on the first page of our last set of notes, and it had their names. So I know that sodium is just a metal on the table, but ClO4, I can find that on my polyatomic ion sheet, and it's called perchlorate. It's actually perchlorate, I'm pretty sure. You know what? Why don't I double check on a polyatomic ion sheet? I don't think y'all memorize it. Why am I memorizing it? Yes, it is perchlorate. Okay, I was right, never mind. Okay, so perchlorate is what that one is. There you go. So it, all it wanted you to do was circle the polyatomic ion, which is ClO4, and then name it. And you name that by looking at the chart, okay? Um, pretty much always the polyatomic ion is going to be second. The only time it is not second is this weird case, NH4. NH4 is always first. It's the only polyatomic ion that is positive. Positive ions are written first. So NH4, when I look it up on my polyatomic ion sheet, is ammonium. And that's it. All the rest of these are going to be the second thing. All the rest are going to be the second thing is the one you're looking for on your polyatomic ion sheet. Okay, so number five. So explain why CA3PO42 has brackets around the polyatomic ion. So why are these parentheses right here? They're calling them brackets, parentheses, whatever. Has brackets around the polyatomic ion, whereas NGCRO4, so that's my polyatomic ion. So much. There we go. Um, why is it not in brackets? Okay. So we don't always have to put our polyatomic ions in parentheses. The only time you have to is notice there's more than one of them. Okay, so I need two PO4s. If I didn't have those parentheses around it, it would look like CA3PO42. It would look like I want 42 oxygens. I don't want 42 oxygens. I want two phosphates. That's what balances my compound. So that's the reason why I need the brackets. Over here, CRO4, well, CRO4 is chromate. CRO4 is chromate. There's not, there is four oxygens in chromate. Um, it's not saying that I need four CRO. CRO is not a polyatomic ion. You wouldn't find that on your polyatomic ion sheet. It doesn't exist. But CRO4 is. CRO4 is chromate. Okay, so that's the reason. Here we go. Scrolling down. Now we're getting to the naming. So that was kind of like our background, like how, why are we doing things the way we do them. Now we're going to actually practice the naming parts that we did before break. So name the molecular compound below. Molecular means use your prefixes. This is 
when I tack on prefixes like die, try, tetra, uh, mono, if it's the second element. So mono, di, tri, tetra, and then we have penta, hexa. I know it's so sloppy, guys. It's like I hope you still have your notes. I will post this note sheet that has the prefixes in it. Hexa, hepta, then it's octa, nana, and deca. Okay, so that's one through ten. Deca is ten. Mono is one. So if I'm looking at this one, there's a two and a five. So two is di. So that'd be di phosphorus. So that's what P is. We don't change the name on the first element. It's just di phosphorus. Um, and in the second element, you do change the name. So this is oxygen. So I'm going to change it to oxide. They always end in I on the second element. So it's in the oxide, but there's a five in front of it. Five is penta. So it's in the Pentoxide, which sounds weird, but that's what it is. And I know I'm out of room. Pent oxide. I'm sorry that I had to write up like that, but pent oxide is what the answer to that one is. And that's, that's easy, okay, guys? You just add prefixes to front of them. I'm not going to do any more of them. Those are simple. All right, now we have the naming the ionic compounds. I'm trying to change colors. So, name the ionic compounds below. Remember, for ionic compounds, you name the metal, so name metal, don't do anything to it, just name it. So let's do that one, let's pick one, a little harder. Okay, so Ni on the parent table is nickel, name it. Okay, if the metal is in the middle, or it's not in the first two columns, or you don't know it's charged, so it's not one of the exceptions to the rule, like zinc, um, silver, cadmium, aluminum, or the first two columns. So a metal in the middle, or one you don't know is charged. I'm just trying to save space here. Either way you want to word it. If it's a metal in the middle, it needs Roman numerals representing its charge. If it's not a metal in the middle, it doesn't, and you just move on. Okay, but this one, nickel, where's nickel? Nickel is in the middle. It's a metal in the middle. It's not in the first two columns. I am going to have to figure out its charge. So I'm going to leave parentheses here ready to write a charge. I don't know it yet. That's the whole point of why I have to write the Roman numerals is I don't know it's charge until I figure it out. So how do I figure it out is with my second element. The second element, you change the element's name. So second element, change the ending to I. So BR is bromine. It's going to become bromide. All right. Okay, cool. Done. Um, but then to figure out the charge, I need to compare it to bromine. So bromine is a minus one. So it is a minus one charge. There's three of them. So it's minus one, minus one, minus one. What's well, a total of a negative three charge? So nickel, there's only one of. One nickel charge has to balance out a negative three. So that nickel has to be a three. It has to be a plus three charge. Okay. That's how we figure the charge. There we go. Um, last thing, as you notice, this has two elements, two elements, two elements, two elements. This one has one, two, three, has one, two, three, okay? So if it has three or more elements, then it's a polyatomic ion, polyatomic ion, and you have to look it up on that. I will post your notes that have your prefixes, how you that ion, if you lost those things, but you look it up. Or you could Google it. <laughs> What's PO4? Because um, that's when you're probably coming around. One of the parentheses with PO4. All right. There we go. Almost done. Scrolling down. Last two little chunks. It's just how to work backwards. So everything I just said, now we just go backwards. How do I write their formulas? Instead of their names, now I want to write their formulas. So for molecular, easy peasy, use the prefixes. The prefixes tell you how many there are. So I'm kind of got all uncalibrated again. So tri means three. So phosphorus is symbol is P, and there's three of them. Done. Mon, that's the prefix for one. Oxide is oxygen, so it's O. So there's one oxygen. I don't write numbers for one. So done. There you go. Those are easy. You can do those. 
Write the formulas for an ionic compound. Again, for ionic compounds, ionic compounds are ions. They have charges. So they have charges that you switch. Remember, you have to write their charges above them and switch them to get their little subscript numbers. So I can go ahead and write their symbols. Let's do, yeah, we'll do two of these. I'm going to start with this one because it's easier. Sodium sulfide. So sodium symbol is in A. Sulfur symbol is S. Now to figure out their to figure out their little subscripts, I'm going to write their charge. So I look on the beer table. Sulfur is in the negative two column. Sodium is in A and it's in the plus one column. So it's a plus one minus two. Those do not balance to zero. Plus one minus two is not zero. So I have to crisscross the numbers or switch them. So the two comes down to the, to the sodium and the one comes down to the sulfur and the right ones. Okay, so there you go, that's how you do those. Um, but notice I had one time in here where, see how this ends in I'd, this ends in I'd, this ends in I'd, this ends in I'd. Well, that's all normal then. They're all two element compounds, find the metal on the tape, periodic table, find the um, non-metal on the periodic table. This one actually already gave you the symbol. They're already giving it to you, that's zinc. I'll write it down here. It's supposed to say zinc, but they gave you the symbol. So you just scoot that on over. They gave it to you. Um, but up here, this one is not in an I. It says phosphite. Remember, it and eight? Those are how polyatomic ions end. Chlorate, nitrate, sulfate, phosphate. Okay, so all those eights and ites um, are polyatomic ions. So I know when I'm looking this one up, calcium is Ca, and it has a plus two charge. So that's what it says on the periodic tables in a second. It's in the plus two column. But phosphite is not on the periodic table. Phosphites, sorry, the song just came on for no reason. It's way after school. Goodness. Um, phosphite is PO3, and it has a negative three charge. So I looked that up on my college my bio sheet, but again, I can post the notes, but for the rest of these, you actually don't have any more of these. So again, same thing, crisscross them. So the three comes down to the calcium, the two comes down to the phosphite. Oops, oh, the three, the three, two. But remember, we have that same problem. I don't want 32 oxygens. I want two phosphates, two phosphites. Okay, and there you go. Okay, I feel like that should be enough for you to be able to do the rest of the problems. I will open a Google Meet, um, and you can ask me more things, but you should have listened to this, went through it, got the answers I've given you, and then tried to move forward from there.